Good morning, Keller Williams, and welcome back to the KW Command 66 Day Challenge 7.0, and today is day nine. So we are continuing on with our focus on the contacts applet, and today we're gonna to talk about two partnerships that Keller Williams has. One, an exclusive partnership that allows us to provide hyper-local market data and hyper-local um, neighborhood analysis and assignment. So let's go into the contacts applet. We're gonna click on our second icon down here as we have been for the last few days. We're gonna open up contacts. And when you enter your contacts, obviously we know these are all fake contacts. And yet when you're putting in your contact, you have the opportunity when you are adding it to come down to the add more information button if we're doing this manually, or obviously if you're gonna import it, you've seen that process. Um, but to put in an address for the actual contacts that you're entering. So if we scroll down, you can see that there is a section here for primary address. Now, the first partnership that we have at KW is with Google. And what that means is as we start to type in a specific address, you are going to see that because I am located in Katy, immediately as I start typing in 6715 arrow, I get a list of potential addresses that might match the address that I am typing in. And I think we talked about this a little bit back on day three when we were manually adding the contact. Now, why is it important that I make sure that I actually select one of these addresses? Well, if we go back into our fake contact here, Marge Simpson, although this is all fake information, the address is actually a true address located in Springfield. And you can see because we have this address entered, there is this section here in the middle that says neighborhoods. And it tells us that the primary neighborhood that has been assigned to this fake contact is called Metro Center. Where are these neighborhoods coming from and how are they being assigned? Well, that's through the second partnership that we have, which is an exclusive partnership with the Nextdoor social platform. So if, familiar, if you are familiar with nextdoor.com, you can go on, you can actually put in your information for the address that you live at, it'll assign you to a neighborhood and then it's a social platform there. The content, depending on your area, I don't know, in my area it's not always the best, just being real, it's a lot of garage sales and missing cats and whose dog pooped in my yard and that kind of stuff. However, think about the data that we have access to as KW agents. Next door neighborhoods are created by the consumers that live there. There's an entire process that you have to go through with Nextdoor to create a neighborhood. And basically, once you submit a certain neighborhood with specific boundaries and name, Nextdoor reaches out to the neighbors that live in that neighborhood, typically through postcards, where they then scan a specific QR code or go to a specific link they approve that neighborhood and once enough people in the neighborhood have approved the boundaries and the name then that neighborhood gets created if you're curious about next door and you want to know more about the availability of next door neighborhoods where you live you can go to nextdoor.com backslash find dash neighborhood backslash this is going to give you a list of all the states where next door has neighborhoods listed and then if you click on any one given state, you can come in and search by all the cities that Nextdoor has neighborhoods in. And if we come down to the hometown, Katy, Texas here, this would be a list of all the Nextdoor neighborhoods that exists inside of my hometown of Katy, Texas. So you can see here at the top, there are 242 neighborhoods. And if we scroll down, you're gonna see the lists of all of those neighborhoods. So if we did the same thing, if we went back, right, Marge lives in Springfield. So if we go back and we say, all right, let's go and see what other neighborhoods are in and around on this site, next door site, we could go to Massachusetts. We're gonna choose Springfield. There's a lot of neighborhoods here. All right, so Springfield, there we go. And Marge was assigned based on her address to the Metro Center neighborhood. But we can see that there are 61 neighborhoods in Springfield, Mass. And if we wanted to, we could come down and see what the other neighborhoods are. 
So if you're curious whether Nextdoor is going to work in your market, this is the best way to find out where those neighborhoods are and what the names of them are. In addition, when you come in and put in an address, you can see that the neighborhood has been assigned. Now, if you don't have Nextdoor, you can always come in and click on Add Neighborhood and then choose Find on Map. Now this little pin that's here on the map is based upon the address that we have entered. And you can see on this screen, you see all these weird character or, or shapes, excuse me. These are all next door neighborhoods. And as we zoom in, you're going to see the names of all the next door neighborhoods. Now let's say Marge lived just across uh, whatever this is, Highway 5, Freeway 5, whatever it is, the 5, depending on where you're from. Let's say she lived in this area. Well, in this case, the pin would have been dropped, but no next door neighborhood would have been assigned. Now you do still have the ability, if you wanted to, to assign her to a neighboring neighborhood that might make sense. This neighborhood assignment is going to be very important when we transition to smart plans, which will be in a week or two. Um, one of my favorite smart plans is the monthly neighborhood nurture smart plan, and it provides your contacts with hyper local market data. Um, in order to use that smart plan, we've got to make sure that the neighborhood has actually been assigned. So this is how you can see what neighborhoods are available. And again, if you wanted to, if you were already living in Metro Center, but let's say Marge wants to know more about South End and maybe Homer every now and then to ask about Maple High Six Corners, and uh, maybe Bart has some friends that live in McKnight and he wants to know what's happening over there. Marge is a little concerned about McKnight. Maybe is Bart hanging out with the right people or whatever you could also assign these three neighborhoods to Marge as well. So Marge has now actually been assigned to Metro Center as her primary, but to Maple High Six, South End, and McKnight. Leading up to the Smart Plan video series, I would highly recommend that all of your contacts, right? Our goal anytime we have a contact is to have a name, a phone number, an email, and an address. Ideally, that address is already inside of a next door neighborhood and gets auto assigned. If not, I would go through your contacts and see which ones have and have not been assigned to neighborhoods. Now, I'm sure you're probably thinking that's gonna be a really hard process to go contact by contact by contact. Well, what if there was a filter that could easily show you which contacts have a neighborhood and which one don't? Here we go, we talked about filters a few days ago. We can click on has neighborhoods no and click on apply and then we're going to see the three contacts in our database that don't actually have neighborhoods assigned so we could click on each one of those go into add neighborhood find on map right and you can see the pin dropped at this fictional uh, this is uh, who is this i think this is garfield's dad um, but you can zoom in right and we can see okay well look at that the pin got dropped right in the middle of multiple next door neighborhoods, but for some reason they haven't created a next door neighborhood right here. So I could choose to add any one or all of these next door neighborhoods to this contact record for John Arbuckle. We could do the same thing as we came through. So here's old Sabrina Spellman. We could come in, check out add neighborhood, find on map, right? 133 Collins Road. We're gonna zoom in and Look at that, like she is literally right on the edge, right on the edge of multiple next door neighborhoods. So we could come through and just assign her to all three of these and click on save. And we could do the same thing for our last old SpongeBob. SpongeBob's gotta have a neighborhood, come on. So we'll click on add neighborhood, find on map, 124 Conch Street, Bikini Bottom, Florida. And sure enough, no next door neighborhood where he lives. So we might assign the three closest and click on save. Super important guys to understand how these neighborhoods work to get more information about what neighborhoods are available where you live. Again, nextdoor.com backslash find dash neighborhood. Check out the states where your contacts live or where you're located, kind of see. I've had some people that say, oh, we don't have a lot of next door neighborhoods here. And then I actually go look up where they are and it turns out they do. The goal would be to have addresses for all your contacts and to ensure that after you filter for neighborhoods know that you go in and start assigning each one of those contacts to neighborhoods by clicking on add neighborhood, find on map, zoom in on that map and let's find the closest ones 
and go ahead and assign your contact to one or more of those. That's it for today's your homework. Go through your contacts, do a quick filter for neighborhood no, and start assigning them to those neighborhoods. It's not going to do anything to the contact right now. However, it will be very impactful when we move on to smart plans. Guys, I hope everyone's having a fantastic day. And as always, I'll look forward to talking to you again real soon.